So one of my favorite patterns is to short the first red day on a pump and dump. How do you spot this? What is a pump and dump? I'm gonna answer it in this video. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here, answering your questions, telling you everything that I've learned over the past 20 years. I never had a teacher, so my goal is to be the teacher to you that I never had. Um, first, I want you to click the link just below this video. I'm gonna include a book called The Complete Penny Stock Course, written not by me, but my student, Jamil, who has organized all of my lessons into one book. I wrote the foreword, thank you, Jamil. This is why I love teaching. Students are taking my lessons and you know, trying to share it in different ways and hopefully apply it and profit from it. That's the whole goal here. I wanna make you more profitable. Um, actually, leave a comment below this video. Are you profitable or not? Say yes or no, and it's not the end of the world. If not, remember 90% of traders lose. Most of the traders on Twitter who post like a screenshot at the end of the month or like end of the year or some you know, BS screenshot, they're not really profitable. They're just lying to you or they're doing it for ego they can't really fess up to the fact that they're unprofitable. This is why it's so important to be fully transparent, showing every single trade, not just one screenshot, not just one trade, every single trade, good, bad, everything in between, knowing exactly how much you're risking too. Because I see some of these traders, they're like, oh, made $50,000. And everyone's like, wow, I wanna make $50,000. Then you don't realize they actually use like $700,000 or $800,000 to do it. Some traders are like, oh, I'm only gonna talk about my stock trades, not about my option trades because they got wrecked on options. There's so much BS. Just be fully transparent. And if you're going to learn from somebody, require them to be fully transparent too. They should show you all of their trades from A to Z. Nothing left out because you need to know frankly, like who's qualified. It's not about bragging. It's about who's real and who's not. Remember, most traders lose. So this brings up my point. What is a pump and dump? Most penny stocks are scams or they're going to go bankrupt. I'm not a lawyer. I don't care what's legal and what's not. I just know that whether you're a scam or you're probably you know, some kind of sketchy company, you're probably gonna go nowhere in the end. That means that when your stock is spiking, it's usually a good time to short sell or bet against it. Pump and dumps is when the company or somebody from the company or the insiders or some investor or some third party pumps up the stock price to get the stock up so that they can sell their shares or they can do a financing. If it's the company involved in the pump, which happens sometimes, um, they get the stock up from let's say 10 cents to $5 a share, and then when the stock is at $5 a share, they do a big financing with some random you know, hedge fund based in Belize or Cyprus, um, and they sell millions of shares at let's say $2 a share. So they sell it at a big discount to the current price, but they still raise a few million dollars, which frankly is a lot of money. Then the management can pay themselves nice salaries and nice fees for several years until they can announce some new product and pump up their stock again, and then it crashes after they do the toxic financings. Um, that's the game for when insiders pump it up. And again, pump and dumps are when Ever somebody pumps up the stock price, whether it's through a press release or a social media campaign, a lot of these companies like to tweet, big news coming, um, or they're on TV, or they take out ads on Fox, um, they're investing money into the promotion of their stock. Why are they doing that? Because they want their stock price to go up. Maybe the company isn't even gonna do a financing. They can't even find somebody to raise millions of dollars at let's say $2 a share. So they're just gonna sell their shares. A lot of insiders just will sell when the stock is high and they'll cash out. And the CEO will sell half their position or some third party who's paying for the dissemination of some email blast will sell you know, a million shares at pumped up prices while paying for $300,000 to send out email blasts to pump up the stock price. You pump up the stock price, you dump the shares. That's what a pump and dump is. So any time a company is advertising on TV, advertising on social media, uh, there's email blasts going out or WhatsApp blasts going out. I mean, I, apparently they're like promoting it on uh, Telegram is another app. I've, I've seen so many different kinds of promotions. 
whatever the case, the company is putting money or somebody involved in the company or invested in the company is putting money into pumping up the stock price. Those stocks always fail. Why? Because they're not putting money into the actual company, into the actual production of a product or service. They're not investing in the company, they're investing in the stock price. And the only reason that you invest in the stock price is to get the stock up high enough so that you can sell it. Pump and dump. Why is this useful? Because whether it's illegal or sketchy, I don't care about that. I'm just trading the price action. I'm trading the technicals. You can short the first red day, okay? So if a stock that has been hyped up on social media or on TV or in an email blast or multiple email blasts, if it's gone up one, two, three, five, ten 10 days, 20 days in a row, the higher the better because it's like uh, you know a, a jet without any fuel, right? So like they're putting in all this fuel into the jet to get the jet as high as possible, which is the stock price. And then once the promotion is over, which means that whoever paid for the pumping has sold off all of their shares or maybe half of their shares, maybe they don't want to sell all, so then it would look you know suspicious if the CEO just sells all their shares, so maybe they sell like half their shares. You have that first red day in the chart. So after five, six, seven, 10, sometimes 20 days in a row where every single day the stock is up, it looks like it can do no wrong. Maybe there's a press release every day too. So it's usually a coordinated campaign between tweets, press releases, maybe there's an ad campaign on TV. The whole goal is to get people believing in the company and buying the stock in that first red day usually when the volume drops a little bit too because there's not as much buying because maybe the promotion stops. Maybe they're not sending out as many emails, there's not as many tweets, there's not as many ads on TV. That is the first sign that the pump is over, at least for the time being. Sometimes they, they lure in shorts and then they pump it up. They take one or two days off. I've seen that happen sometimes too. So this isn't 100% exact science. But the beautiful thing about pumping is that it is predictable because they're specifically pumping it for a reason. Once they sell their shares, there's no reason to pump it anymore. They just want to try to create a soft landing. This is what a lot of penny stock promoters do and a lot of sketchy market makers and sketchy people involved with these companies. They don't want the stock to crash 90% in one day because that opens up a lot of questions. Why did the stock go up for so much so long? Everyone who bought in, a lot of you know financially naive people who believe these pumps, they start wondering, why did the stock just drop 90% on no news. Well, you don't realize that maybe you were just invested in a boiler room operation. Also, there's telemarketing phone calls that still go on in crazy countries like Belize, Cyprus, Panama, um, Philippines. I'm trying to think of where some boiler rooms that I've seen have been based. Spain, France, Great Britain, China, um, a lot of overseas. Singapore, a lot of overseas um, Boiler rooms that, frankly, if you've seen like The Wolf of Wall Street or the movie Boiler Room, you know, they're just pumping up BS stocks. Oh, we found this amazing gold. Oh, this is an amazing technology. Oh, we just found the cure for cancer. It's all BS. And again, they don't want it to drop that much all in one day because that opens up, uh, you know, potential SEC investigations, potential uh, jail sentences for the insiders or the promoters. So usually they like to drop it, um, but they still have to support it a little bit because you know without any market maker support or any promotion, these stocks are worthless. They'll go to zero, but they can't let the public know that all in one or two days or even a week because then they'll get too many complaints. So. When they stop promotion, they still have to buy a little bit to support the price. The good news is that you can predict that. So not only can you short the stock on the first red day, usually you get like a 20%, 30%, sometimes 50 to 70% drop in one, two, three, or four days. Um, but you know that usually the promoters are gonna support it. So after you get the big drop, you can also get a nice little bounce. Uh, this is a number five pattern from my penny stocking framework guide. We'll link that uh, underneath this video too. Um, so we're looking at, if you know my seven step framework from my penny stocking framework guide, we're looking at a number three um, in a number four when the stock is rising. The number four is the crash. Number five is a dip buy opportunity. Then you usually get a bounce because the promoters create a bounce to make it look like it's naturally trading. Um, and then you can short that bounce. That's a number six from my penny stocking framework guide. And then you have a number seven, which is like the long kiss goodnight. And usually these stocks are never you know, heard from again until they do another promotion, which is another few weeks or another few months down the line. Um, this happens all the time. 
And whether the stock goes from 50 cents to $7 during the promotion and then crashes to $2, or whether it goes from 2 cents to 20 cents um, and then crashes, uh, there's a lot of pumping going on and a lot of dumping. And again, I don't want the promoters to get shut down. I want them to do less cocaine. I want them to be more effective. You know, if there are more promoters and more pumps, then that's just more predictable plays for me. I love every single pump. I'm very grateful. If you know any promoter, give them a handshake. Say thank you for being so unethical. Thank you for being so outrageously uncaring for other people. Even though we know that your soul is going straight to hell and you're going to you know, burn in eternal damnation, thank you for pumping this stock and creating such predictable patterns over the past two decades. I would shake their hand and then I would smack them for being such assholes. Um, a lot of financially naive people get sucked into these uh, schemes. If you ever see me on Twitter, follow me, Tim Timothy Sykes, uh, at you, Timothy Sykes on Twitter, that's my username. I only have one profile, don't believe any of the non-verified profiles. Uh, you can see me sometimes taking on these people who believe in these pumps, okay? Like, they go down with the ship, they're like, Sykes, you're lying, and I'm like, what do you think I'm lying about exactly? Because I've done a lot of exposés on these pumps. I just highlight their own SEC filings. Nobody reads the SEC filings where they say they have very little cash, where they say they're probably going to be out of business in three to six months. So it's in their own best interest to do a pump or you know, some third party does a pump which they, they're not aware of. This is a classic thing with these companies. They love saying they're unaware of it. It just so happens that there's a coordinated email campaign. Oh, we have no idea. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's laughable how many times it happens and it's kind of sad um, how many people fall for it. So if you see me on Twitter, I'm usually fighting with somebody who's invested in a pump. They don't believe me and I'm like, all right, it's okay, you don't believe me, just lose you know, half or all your money, then you'll learn the hard way, then you'll come back to me, then you'll say, Tim, I'm sorry you were right, and I'll say, I'm sorry you don't have any more money because now you're you know, usually dead broke, you can't even be my student if you wanted to be. This is how this game usually plays out. It's played out so many times, I'm not even amused by it anymore. It's just really sad that they lure in people to believe this crap over and over and over again. Sponge Tech was the most famous pumping them. They actually put out a press release saying, we're suing short seller Timothy Sykes for his lies and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, damn. All I did was highlight your SEC filings. Like, all I did was highlight what you put out. And sure enough, I was pretty scared, actually, because I'd never been sued. I still have yet to be sued, right? Um, but during this episode, the next day, or maybe it was two days later, uh, the CEO of Sponge Tech got arrested for fraud. Uh, it turned out it was all fake. It was all a lie. Um, so I never actually got served. They put out a press release. Some people were like, Tim Sykes, you have been sued. I saw Sponge Tech sued you. No, they put out a press release saying they were going to sue me. They never got a chance to because they were arrested for fraud. Um, so if they had sued me, it probably would have been like a little feather in my cap. Um, I don't want to expose this kind of stuff because, frankly, again, I'm grateful for every pump, but I can't help it because I want you to learn how this game is played. You can ride it up. There's nothing wrong with buying the stock, you know, mid-pump or early pump. But late in the pump, even if it goes up for a few hours or a few days, you're risking a lot. It's either going to crash a lot in one day. Sometimes it just gets halted by the SEC. Um, so the higher these things go up, the better they are for shorting. Um, and again, I'm looking for that first red day. I will give you one note. If you're waiting for the first red day to short, oftentimes there's no shares to short uh, because everyone knows about shorting the first red day now. Thank you to my lessons uh, for, you know, kind of popularizing this strategy because people are like, oh shit, this, this does work pretty much all the time. This is crazy. So now you kind of have to anticipate the first red day, which isn't as easy, which frankly is why I don't really short that much anymore. It's gotten harder um, unless you have a big bankroll, unless you're experienced. So for me as a teacher who teach people with non-big bankrolls and people with very little experience, I don't want you necessarily um, risking so much shorting these pump and dumps because they can go on longer than you think. Um, and then trying to find shares of short is a whole nother battle. So for me, I really Really like dip buying the morning panics. Um, again, if you click the link just below, uh, two links. The complete penny stock course is a book by my student Jamil. Um, we talk about these patterns, and then also my penny stocking framework guide. We talk about these patterns. But recognize that any company being hyped up on emails 
or on tweets or on TV is a pump. Whether you want to call it a classic pump and dump or a quasi pump and dump, it's being pumped. And what comes after the pump? The dump. So be prepared, be ready, be cynical. Don't trust these companies. Don't trust management. Expect the worst out of everybody and you'll never be disappointed. Hey, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.